open if you saw um everything everywhere all at once and it was packed and in i you saw it in imac oh my gosh i can't imagine seeing it in imac it was awesome and we bought our tickets last week as soon as they released the timings mm -hmm. so um we had really good seats versus when adam and i saw dune and imax at lincoln center and we were smashed up against the screen uh, oh that's so cool did they give you a survey after you saw the movie mm -mm. oh wow that's where they surveyed us all right let's um Let's go ahead and start because I feel like we're going to talk about it whether we know it or not. Mm -hmm. All Very right. True. Hi, everyone. I'm Chris Geiger. Welcome to No Movies in Hell. I'm Lilacqua Scott, and today we are reviewing everything, everywhere, all at once. I love the title of this movie. I'm using it in other contexts, like Shen Yu, <laughs> everywhere, all at once. <laughs> Anything that seems ubiquitous, I'm like, that's it, everywhere, all at once. Uh, yes. Um, I okay, so I want to get your thoughts uh, since you've seen this in a matter of days, or I guess both of us have seen it in less than a week, but you've seen it. Um, it's the freshest, probably, for you. I think I could see it again. Like, I definitely want maybe to see it again, depending on how long it stays in theaters. Um, because I there was so much happening that I'm sure I missed some things. Uh, things not not key things that I needed for the story, but just details, because there were so many details Yes, in this. And even just watching the trailer again, after seeing the movie, when you watch the trailer, it's just all this mishmash of stuff that doesn't make sense. And yeah. when you watch the movie and then you watch the trailer, you're like, oh, there's the raccoon. Oh, there's this. Yes. Oh raccoon. man. Like, oh, 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 that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, so I do, I think I want to watch it again. Um, at least it, one more time in the theater if I can. Uh, but I loved it. I thought it was yes. great. I had looked forward to it since I saw the trailer months ago. It's an A24, Michelle Yeoh, love her. The other people I didn't really recognize. And Oh, so you didn't recognize the husband? He was a kid actor. <laughs> no, I didn't. I totally did not. Like, he looked familiar. And I was, so I, I just assumed that he was maybe Hong Kong cinema and I had seen him in something there, but we came home and looked him up and he was in Indiana Jones. Yep. And apparently also a lot of head of the class is like a movie, which I watched that show when it was on. So it, it def, he definitely seemed familiar, mm -hmm. but I mean, that role, he did a great job. Everyone did a great job in their roles. The acting was awesome. But it was surprising to me that they didn't give that role to someone who was Hong Kong cinema. You know, yeah. of course, she's a great, she's a big draw. Yeah. Um, but I think, like, he was so amazing in terms of just this. And he's a stunt coordinator, too, it looks yeah. like, on his IMDb profile. Or a stunt, not coordinator, but stunt person, organizer, something like that. Um, so it was just amazing to me that I didn't recognize him, but he was in such a high profile role and so good in it. It's almost like the movie, The Jockey, where you've seen that guy before. He looks very familiar. He's the star in this movie, which is so good. And he's so good in it. And you're like, well, there's so many of those like character actors that you just don't think about. Mm -hmm. who are now getting starring roles, which is awesome. And they're doing a great job in them. So Yeah, I it's interesting. When I saw the trailer, you know, it didn't make any sense. Love Michelle Yeoh. Then when watching the film and it's like, oh, I recognize the actor who plays her dad. I recognize the actor who plays her husband. He I'm like, wow, when was the last time he was in a film? Like I was like, oh, I like he's data and he's like, He's from the Goonies. Oh my gosh. Like, what has he been doing since then? Like, what will it take? You know, it's like, that's very interesting. I didn't recognize the daughter off the bat, mm. but I was like, okay, and this is going to be interesting. And like, they have, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis in kind of like a supporting, but kind of physical comedy role. Not sure what she's going to, you know, uh, do in here. And then, you know, just the, the subplot of, 
you know, they own a laundromat and they have to pay taxes or they're being audited for taxes. And so it's just like going into this film thinking like, okay, and thinking about all the relationships that are involved here. And then when you get into the whole like futuristic multi, you know, <laughs> multi-universes, and it immediately, for me, I thought of the one, um, the Jet Li film from like the late 90s, because I really liked that film, but it was just so, uh, nobody saw it. I think I even bought it on like VHS at some point and had it like at home when I was like in high school, because I thought it was just a really cool film of like, oh, he can, it's a multiverse thing and he has to like fight himself or whatever. And there was elements of this in this film, but then it was also like this crazy surrealism um that reminded me very much of Michelle Gondry um and then the costumes were just amazing like and the fact that like Michelle Yeoh used you know some of the footage from Crazy Rich Asians and her like being on the red carpet for um like premieres in this was just like phenomenal um but I I I think this is probably one of my favorite films like ever um it's it has all the elements it's funny it's weird it's surrealistic it's like 40 ideas that they probably pinned to a wall and had all this time to kind of put it together and my favorite scenes are like the rocks like them in a universe where the rocks <laughs> and you know the the mom and the daughter are still going like back and forth and, and, and talking to each other and the wreck cocoony it's like you relate so much with you you explain to someone what a title of a disney film or whatever and they get it just like 50 to 75 percent <laughs> right and then it's like then her imagination or that universe that has the raccoon <laughs> and like the context it's just it's so great and it's just the, the elements that are just so silly the hot dog finger universe like <laughs> And then they waited so long for us to sit to tell us that using your feet was the primary way of like <laughs> oh, of, of 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 functioning in that type of universe. But everybody's fingers are are hot dogs, and somehow, you know, in evolution, that that person or that being, um, oh my gosh, like overtook somebody with regular hands, like. I just like I I think that the Daniels are amazing. I've seen Swiss Army Man, and I remember you know Nate telling me the premise of it, and I'm just like, all right, end up watching it and, and loving it. And it's like these ideas are just insane. Um, and it now it's been squished into a two and a half hour movie. Where I one thing I did hear before seeing the film was the Daniels did like an interview that said. Make sure that you go to the restroom before you uh, see the movie because you will, you know, you you'll use you lose your your pace. Um, you'll miss a lot of things if you have to get up and leave. Uh, and I was like, I'm so happy that I listened. <laughs> I I just hope that you know, basically after the Oscars this year, that next year this is you know technical category obviously best actress for Michelle Yeoh, best supporting for Jamie Lee Curtis. Like it's, it's so good. Yeah. The great thing is, and I, I think we talked about this in another episode or, or maybe we just spoke about it and didn't record it. <laughs> but when I saw the trailer, I didn't know that it was Michelle Yeoh or Jamie Lee Curtis at first, because whenever you see those women in movies, they are not portrayed as they are in this movie, they're usually very high status characters, right? Mm -hmm. Michelle Yeoh is always this masterful, like very self-possessed, usually very wealthy or very skilled woman. Like she's either doing some sort of, uh, she's either kicking somebody's butt or she's like, you know, in charge of whatever it is they're trying to do. And the same thing with Jamie Lee Curtis, right? She's very, she's usually very, physically attractive um, yes and you know she's kind of known for that um and she's also an action star mm -hmm. which you 
you in the first scene with her, you don't get it all. Like yes. you do get that, of course, later. What I really liked about this is it it's not, I don't know, is it a comedy? But I laughed more in this than I've laughed at many other things that were listed as comedies. Very true. So yeah, and I I think those are my favorite kind of parts. They were just surprising little jokes that made sense within the context of the movie. But if you hadn't watched the movie or if you hadn't watched up to that point and you just yeah. saw that one scene, you'd, it would make no sense to you and it would not be funny or it might be absurd, but not funny. Yes. <laughs> I thought it was great. And I, I didn't see Swiss Army Man. That's not true. I tried to watch Swiss Army Man twice and I couldn't get past like the first oh. 15 minutes. Yeah. This makes me want to go back and try again. <laughs> Maybe when now I'm on a plane and I can't, I have, I'm just forced to sit there and just got cry. it. I was like, it, that totally makes sense. I mean, it is, it, it, it's just, it has that like undertone of fantastical element with prestige actors again, where you're looking at, you know, a Daniel Radcliffe right off of um, Harry Potter and he's choosing to do like the silliest thing in the world as being a dead body. <laughs> Right. What else have the Daniels done? So they are actually most famous for, I was informed of the turn down for what music video that came out, I want to say like six or seven years ago, like the viral video that came out. Um, and that was a music video. And then from oh. there, they did Swiss <laughs> Army Man. And then uh, three years ago, they did a different, another film and then they did this film. So there's not a lot in the catalog, mm. but they're very picky with their, you know, their projects, very secretive with their projects. And, you know, I think this film came out, um, it was in Sundance earlier this year and it went to um, South by Southwest, what, a couple days before being released in, in New York. So like the key, key markets. Mm. okay well yes hopefully more from them <laughs> yeah I'm like you know that's pretty cool that they are able to do things on their own terms and like you know they get the financing and they get the backing to do it the distribution from A24 I really hope to see you know more um you know more stuff from them well, I definitely think this is going to make money yeah yeah there was something else the we like I think Dax wanted to see this and he wanted to see something else. And I said, which one do you want to see first? Oh, Infinite Storm. And mm. I said, which one do you want to see first? And he said, everything everywhere, because that seems like it might go out of theaters before Infinite Storm, which seems like a big budget sort of family adventure movie. Maybe not family, but yeah, kind of family. Friendly. Yeah. Adventure. Naomi Watts, I think. Yeah. So we, we, we prioritize this one, but after seeing it, I don't think it'll go out soon. Yeah. Um, I hope. I know that it was last weekend. I think it was number one across like indie. So the per screen cap for this film um, was actually pretty well received. Nice. Um, so it's like, oh, that's good to hear. <laughs> And I'm recommending it to everyone. So at least five people will probably see it <laughs> based on that. Same. I'm like, yeah, word of mouth, I guess, you know, right. it does so much. True story. Let's pull up the slide. Yay. So soundtrack, you give it a three. I give it a two. I did. I was thinking of just like the weird original, like when Rakakuni starts singing. <laughs> I just... I mean, it's original. Um, I just thought it, that that was like kind of something neat. <laughs> um, and it's kind of, you know, obviously related to the overall tone of, of the film. I think it was just overwhelming, like all the different things that you're trying to pay attention to at once. And I think the soundtrack I just missed. I'm sure it's awesome. And if I see it again in the theater, I will have to pay more attention to the audio part of it, but I think I was just kind of too distracted by everything else. Yeah, you know, that's the same, I guess that's the same way I feel about jewelry. So 
after actually seeing the film and I was thinking like, oh man, when I get ready to rate this, jewelry category will be lower just because there wasn't in the classical sense uh, a lot of abundance of jewelry, despite like the the singer character from a universe and then the 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 star um, when she is the Hollywood star. But I was thinking, you know, the googly eyes, <laughs> do they count <laughs> as jewelry? Like, I mean, is a proper accessory to tell, you know, that story of like the fun, you know, the fun one or the fun person, uh, you know, versus like the more serious and the, the yeah. So, yeah, I was, I usually have some googly eyes in my little <laughs> box. And oh really I looked for some before we recorded because I was gonna put one on to start <laughs> but I couldn't find any which doesn't mean they're not in there it just means my craft box has not been organized in a very long time <laughs> and it's also probably just more than one box now that I need to look through <laughs> I put jewelry as a two there wasn't very much it didn't have an integral part in the story yeah um but I did notice it in and I in the movie while we were watching. And I thought that they did a very good job of giving each character jewelry that would be appropriate to them. Mm -hmm. So like Jamie Lee Curtis had like a beaded, a long beaded necklace. Yes. Which seemed very appropriate to her character. Uh, for the New Year's Eve party, Michelle was wearing a jade pendant with the like circle in the middle, or the hole in the middle. That seemed very appropriate. So they did a good job in matching the jewelry to the character, but mm -hmm. it just wasn't, uh, of all the categories it just wasn't stand out like the other ones were got it yeah yeah, yeah. so we both really like this yes i thought that the costumes were phenomenal especially the daughter and the changes um and they like elaborate like hair and makeup i was just like this is kind of insane very funny um i like i loved it it was just something i've never seen before the acting was incredible because you had to go through these they had to go through these certain things where they had to be certain people in like just a split second of time and it, it was just so good just so good i i don't even know how to describe it agree Maybe it'll be on your flight and you you can watch it again. <laughs> that would be great. Um, yeah. yeah. All right, I'm going to stop sharing. Do you have anything to plug? Let's see. Well, we are going to do a, an Oscars wrap up soon with a special guest. With a special guest. So uh, looking that'll be forward fun. to that. Yes. Um, <laughs> we, we have, have plenty winner. of reviews that are coming so yes we did have a winner in our oscar ballot contest and it's jessica jong she is going to be joining Yay. us as our special guest for the oscars discussion so Yay, Jessica! all right so we'll close out for now thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time thank you